previous example that we saw in this video used the SpectroX standard search capability or standard search engine to quickly identify the presence of standardized wireless carriers within a recorded spectrum. Uh, we did this by searching on their training sequences and identifying them as either GSM, Edge, uh, wireless LAN, or various uh, flavors of the LTE spectrum. Let's take this a little bit uh, one step further and look at an example of a situation where a designer was building a LAN receiver, a uh, 802.11 LAN receiver, that worked well in the laboratory environment but started to show packet drops uh, as he took it into the field. Uh, we recorded the spectrum and uh, see the same, same four wireless carriers that we had seen before, but now, in addition, uh, there is this presence of what appears to be a frequency hopper. In some cases, a pair of frequency hoppers hopping together. In other cases, uh, perhaps two different carriers, don't really know, uh, individualized uh, frequency hoppers as well. In some cases, actually fairly close, uh, but not appearing to be hopping on top of the wireless LAN receiver itself. So we could certainly go through and, and as we had indicated in a previous video, peel back the onion by identifying those things that we know from those things that we don't, uh, and we would use the standard search uh, to do that, and we would certainly come up with four wireless uh, re re uh, waveforms as we had in the previous demo. Let's assume that we had done that, we still would not know what these frequency hoppers are doing and whether or not they're actually causing damage uh, to the uh, ability of the LAN receiver to work properly. So another tool that SpectroX gives us is the what we call zoom box. The ability very quickly to zoom in on a particular portion of the frequency domain to define a time window within that frequency window and just play that zoomed in portion. Since the wireless LAN receiver and its occupied bandwidth is the area of interest, let's go ahead and draw a zoom box uh, around that portion of the spectrum. In this case, SpectroX will redraw the frequency uh, axis, the x-axis, to go from the left edge of the box to the right edge of the box and will play a time slice equal to that time defined by the bottom to the top of the zoom box. And when I release that, uh, we see just the land carrier with occasionally this frequency hopper showing up uh, relatively close, but certainly not overlapping the land receiver. But if I zoom in again, then indeed what I start to see is the unmodulated carrier of, uh, or unmodulated portion of this frequency hopper uh, carrier, and in fact what appears to be the upper frequency of a pair of frequency hoppers, one of which seems to have hopped in uh, to the occupied bandwidth of the LAN receiver. But I still have not yet completely quantified whether or not this is what's causing the problem. So a feature of SpectroX allows me to place markers on either side of a portion of the spectrum recording that I'm interested in and to export that delimited data to a file format that is usable by other pieces of software, one of which is the Agilent uh, 89600 uh, vector signal analysis software. This is a, uh, a uh, software program that actually takes the exported spectrum from SpectroX and demodulates it uh, into and shows us the actual demodulated symbol constellation. In this case, since it's an 802.11 spectrum, we can go ahead and tell it that that's in fact what it is and set it up to demodulate and show the symbol constellation. Now, I know that the original timing start zero here was 1.2, almost 1.3 uh, milliseconds in length. If I add another almost 0.4 milliseconds to that, what I need to be looking at is a time span into the file of somewhere around 1.5 to 1.7 milliseconds. I've set up the frequency display in the demodulation program, the Agilent demodulation program, to correspond to the same frequency display that's in SpectroX's spectrogram. Here's this one Bluetooth carrier on the left, and here is the LAN 
um, spectrum in a peak power uh, display. So if, in fact, a second frequency hopper was hopping in here, the power would be consumed and would not be specifically visible, but would be part of the power, the overall peak power display in the, uh, in the spectrogram in the Agilent software. So if I move my time marker uh, to some location short of 1.6 milliseconds, I see a very clean constellation, the 64 area QAM uh, wireless LAN const symbol constellation, and very clean uh, tones, pilot tones. But if I allow this to move forward in time, up it's close to 1.6 milliseconds, all of a sudden, here's the lower frequency blue or a lower frequency hopper and theoretically the other hopper buried in the in the power spectrum and sure enough the constellation has taken a major hit and the pilot tones have lost lock this program also allows me to actually measure the change in the error vector magnitude and if i were to display that sure enough it would display a substantial increase in edm uh, error vector magnitude as a result of the the hopper itself. So the next step would be to then say, all right, if we've shown that the dual tone frequency hopper, if the dual tone frequency hopper is in fact what's causing the jamming, then the question then becomes, is there a way to identify and characterize this frequency hopper by some other means and using some other tools within SpectroX. And we'll show that in the next uh, video utilizing carrier search and carrier search pruning.